Introduction to the Epidemiology of the Infectious Disease Introduction to the Epidemiology of Infectious Disease In this lecture, we are going to talk about the meaning of the impact of pathogens, type of patients, the timeline for infectious and disease, the case definitions, index and case finding method, the level of disease occurrence, the, the meaning of healthcare infection, the definition of the outbreak, <clears throat> the national definition of healthcare associated outbreak, epidemiological uh, uh, link uh, types, emerging and re-emerging infection, and the chain of infection component and the method of breaking the chain of infection. Finally, we talk about the level of prevention. In the beginning, we will talk about the natural causes of the disease, which is referred to the progress of disease process in individual over time in absence of intervention. The process began with the exposure to accumulation of factor capable to cause disease. Without medical intervention, the process ends with recovery or disability or death. For the impact of pathogen, there are two types of impact of pathogen on the patient. The first is an infection and the second is colonization. The difference between infection and colonization is Infection is replication of the organism in host tissue, which may cause a disease. So, infection mm -hmm. defines as entrance and development of an infection agent in a human body, whether or not developed into disease. In other hand, colonization means the presence of microorganism on the host with growth and multiplication, but without tissue invasion and damage. Understanding this concept is essential in planning and implementation of epidemiological study in healthcare infection prevention and control program. Confusing between colonization with infection can lead to superior association that may lead to expensive, infective, and time-consuming for intervention that occur. People colonized with MDRO can develop infection, but most will not. However, patients colonized with MDRO are the English cases of outbreak in some time. Types of patients. There is two types of patients, case and carriers. The difference between patient types is cases defined is a person who has the pathogen multiplying and meet the case definition of the specific disease. Cases can be divided also into two, clinical cases and subclinical cases. For clinical cases, is referred to the over disease when the signs and symptoms are apparent. Subclinical cases term refer to apparent infection and an immune response can occur without overt clinical disease. For the second type of patient is carrier. Carrier means present mean carrier is a person in whom organisms are present and may be multiplying, but who show no clinical response to either present. Carriers may shed microorganisms during the incubation period and recovery. For the coming back, for the nature of disease timeline for infection and disease, we have infectious-wise and disease-wise. 
And under infectious wise, we have a latent period, with, which also known as pre-infection period. It's defined as the time interval from exposure to infection to infectiousness. It is usually shorter or similar to incubation period. And under disease-wise, we have the incubation period, which is defined as the time from exposure to infection to development of symptomatic disease. And it is usually longer or similar to the latent period. More definition for infection-wise is infectious period or infectivity. It is the time during which the host is infectious. Alter tear is shedding period, which is defined as a period during which the patient excretes pathogen through sputum, saliva, urine, feces, or other body fluid. For systematic period, which is under disease-wise, is a period in which symptoms of the disease are present. These symptoms are variable from disease to disease. The patient can be infectious before and after symptomatic period. Case definition is a criteria used to define disease for surveillance purposes, especially in outbreak situation. We can divide the patient according to the strong and strength of the symptoms and how frequently we are sure about the diagnosis. So, we define them into suspected cases, which is a clinical sign and symptoms without epidemiological link or laboratory confirms. An example in suspected cases, the patient has suspected signs and symptoms of the disease, but they don't have any exposure history which is epidemiological link or laboratory confirmation. Suspected possible cases is essential in outbreak because they help to implement some protocol like isolation and management. Probable cases is additional to the suspected cases and his clinicals. Signs and symptoms with epidemiological link. That means patients have been exposed to unconfirmed cases, eating in some food, safety, stay in the same ward. In this case, confirm, to confirm the cases. Confirmed cases is with or the to confirm cases. The diagnosis is confirmed by appropriate laboratory analysis of operator specimens with or without clinical signs and symptoms and epidemiological link. But they have laboratory but they have laboratory confirmed like PCR positive or ELISA positive in these cases. Case finding. In outbreak, when we need to look for the cases, first of all, we have to know the case finding, the definition of the meaning of case finding. In case finding, we have the index case, which is the first case among the number of similar cases that are epidemiological related. That means is the first cases who get the infection. For the case identifying, it means the method of identifying patient with hospital acquired infection through combination of reviewing medical record, asking or seeking question directly to the patient or healthcare worker, and checking laboratory imaging 
or other relevant data if available. Environmental sampling is the collection of sample from healthcare environment or equipment rather than for human that are cultured for microorganism in a huge outbreak or in uncontrolled outbreak. Level of disease occurrence The disease have a different pattern to occur. Sporadic level, which is occasional cases occurring at a regular interval, like MIRSCO. Endemic level is a case is present over a year but at low levels. Hyperendemic level is the same like endemic levels but the different the cases here present as a high level of occurrence. Endemic or outbreak occurrence of the disease is existence of the expected level for a given time period and locations. Pandemic Epidemic spread over several countries or contents affecting a large number of peoples, like COVID-19. Level of disease This slide is giving the example for each level by different organism. Again, to continue the level of disease occurrence by organism for hyperendemic disease, and epidemic disease. Finally, the endemic level disease examples like COVID as we mentioned. Healthcare associated infection. The term healthcare associated infection is defined as infection that happened to the patient related care receiving in facility. The meaning of health associated health facility is border. It is include hospital nursing and nursing home. The term health associated infection means if the individual receives a medical care in the hospital and has some medical issue additional to his problem, he gets an infection. When considering infection in healthcare associated means the infection associated with, with presence in the hospital you must have a specific criteria which include the disease was not present or incubated at the time of hospital admission. Example, if the, if the patient admitted in Sunday, hospital acquired infection cannot be diagnosed on, on Sunday or Monday and the fairest acceptable diagnosis of hospital acquired infection will be in Tuesday or after. Note that we are using calendar day, Sunday, Monday, in hospital acquired infection determinations. Healthcare associated infection. It should be noted that healthcare associated infection and outbreak are two different terms. Therefore, each AI is not necessarily to be an outbreak when detected sporadically. Additionally, an outbreak can be due to hospital acquired infection or non hospital acquired infection event. When community infection becomes the source of the hospital outbreak, prevention measure, measure should be implemented directly for any detected hospital acquired infection outbreak or not. Outbreak definition. Outbreak, it is a disease occurrence in a population above the normally expected rate at any given time or location. The expected number of the cases can be determined through ongoing disease surveillance. This involves the systematic collection of nominators and denominator data using standardized case definition and surveillance methods. Healthcare associated outbreak. The national definition of healthcare associated outbreak means increase in number of healthcare associated event, infection or colonized among patients or staff over and above the expected number of cases. In addition, 
healthcare associated outbreak meet when there are two or more cases of infection or colonized case by the same organism and same epidemiological link to the location, exposure, and duration. So, once the healthcare associated outbreak is met, the notification process should be started according to the step described in the operation of the hospital acquired infection outbreaks. Epidemiological linked cases. During the outbreak investigation, we have to consider the epidemiological linked cases by, the, by their locations, which is the department or unit, and the durations. The epidemiological linked location cases involved in the outbreak share the same unit or stop in the one unit during the course of the hospital staying. For the epidemiolo epidemiological linked duration, the duration varies from one infection to other based on the incubation period of different organism or disease. Other types of epidemiological linked cases is link exposure link. Exposure link is divided into three types, human to human transmission, which means any person who has been contact with the laboratory confirmed human cases in a choice to have had opportunity to acquire the infection. Second, exposure to common courses, sources. Not Outbreak in healthcare facility are often multifactorial, including branch infection control or clinical practices, contaminated devices, and infections or colonized patients or healthcare workers. Emerging infectious disease. Emerging infectious disease as defined as infectious disease that are newly recognized in a population or have existed about are rapidly increase in incidence of geographic range. Mainly, zoonotic pathogen cause most the emerging infectious disease. In some rare, emerging and re-emerging disease and high-risk pathogens, like one pathogen is enough to declare an outbreak in healthcare facility that unlikely to be affected by that type of pathogens like MERS-CoV or monkeypox and Ebola. Many factors can contribute to, inc to increase the emerging disease like population growth, spread in healthcare facilities, aging population, global travel, changing factor habitat related to climate change. Mm -hmm. It should be noted that a disease that can be considered emerging or re-emerging in one country is not necessarily considered emerging or re-emerging. For example, dengue fever is considered emerging and re-emerging disease in U.S., while it is endemic in certain cities of Saudi Arabia, such as Jeddah and Mecca. Chain of infection. Certain conditions must be met in order for a microbe or infectious disease to be spread from person to person. This process is known as chain of infection, which is defined as a process that begins when the agents leave the host through a port of exit and convey by the same mode of transmission, then enter through an appropriate portal of entry to infect susceptible host. There are six steps in the chain of infection and transmitted will only take place if the six links are intact. The step start with chain of infection and breaking the chain of infection. Causative agent is the pathogen that causes a disease. Reservoir it is the place in the environment where the pathogen lives. This includes people's animal, anything, or medical equipment, and soil and waters. 
Porter of exit is mean the way the infectious agents leave the reservoir through open wound, eraser, and splitter of the body fluid, including coughing, sneezing, and saliva. Mode of transmission is the way the infectious agent can be passed on through direct or indirect contact, injection, or inhalation. Portal of entry is the way the infectious agent can enter a new host through broken skin, the respiratory tract, mucous membrane, and catheter or tube. Suspectable host can be any person. The host vulnerable of, of whom are receiving health care are immunocompromised or have invasive medical device including line devices and airway. For the breaking the chain of infection, control or eliminate the infectious agent, it means rapid identification and isolation of source applying by applying barrier precaution, disinfection and sterilization of the items and equipment and environmental cleaning. For control reservoirs breaking chain infections, using a disposable equipment and disinfection and sterilization of non-disposable equipment, identifying and controlling infection in carrier. And the important point to have an education for all healthcare provider and environmental cleaning with and sanitation and disinfection. For the breaking the chain of infection or controlling the measuring of port of control of portal of exit, proper control of secretion and excretion environment sanitation is important. Also, hand washing and control of splitters is the important. For the control of mode of transmission, hand hygiene is very important when controlling the mode of transmission. Finding the source of isolation and aseptic technique and proper devices care control of airflow and proper food handling with environmental cleaning can lead to decrease and minimize the mood of transmission and breaking the chain of infection. For porter of entry, a septic technique is required and proper device care also is required, including hand hygiene and personal hygiene. For controlling of suspectable host in, in breaking the chain of infection, identifying the high risk patient, including the immune compromised patient, or, and treatment the underlying disease is lead to, the, to breaking the chain of infection and decrease the rate of infections. Herd immunity. Herd immunity is indirect protection from an infectious disease that happens when a population is immune through vaccination or immunity developed through the previous infection. Once a high proportion of all population in the community are immune, the likelihood is small that an infection person will encounter susceptible person. For achieving heart immunity for a specific disease limit, the, pro the probability of an outbreak of that disease. And if it's happened, make it control much more manageable. For herd immunity to work, you need to have some issue to hold it. This issue is disease agent must be restricted to a single host species, and transmission must be relatively directed from one person species to another. And herd immunity operated optimally when there is a random mixing of the populations. Level of prevention. Level of prevention 
is defined as the plan for the measure taken to prevent the onset of disease or other health problem before occurrence of the undesirable health event. There are three distinct levels of prevention. Primary prevention. This prevention measure that prevent the onset of illness or injury before the disease process begin. Example, including immunization and taking regular exercise. For the secondary prevention, this prevention measure that lead to early diagnosis and promote treatment of the disease illness or injury to prevent more severe problem developing. Here, health educators just as health extension practitioners can help individuals acquire the skill of detecting disease in their early stage. Prevention. This prevention measure aims at rehabilitation following significant illness. At this level, health services workers can work to train or re-educate and rehabilitate people who have already developed an impairment or disability.